Okay, I um, want to talk a little bit more about um, this way of representing um, complex numbers in polar form. Um, but um, before doing that, I want to explain a little bit about uh, this function uh, e to the x, this function right in here. Uh, the number e is called Euler's number, and as I've said before, it is an irrational number like pi. Uh, and here is the number going out uh, many, many, many decimal places. Uh, it, uh, it turns out that you can compute the value of e by summing the terms in this series shown here. 2 plus a half plus 1 divided by 2 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2 times 3 times 4 plus 1 divided by 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Notice, if you will, that this is 2 factorial. Okay, this is uh, 3 factorial. This is 4 factorial. This is 5 factorial. Uh, and, uh, and so on. So with this, then, um, we could compute the value of e by summing this series. It turns out that if we take the number e and we raise it to the x power, e to the x, that this is a series. And this is, turns out to be one of the most useful series in mathematics. It's equal to 1 plus x divided by 1 factorial plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial, plus x to the 4th divided by 4 factorial, and so on. Indeed, the concise mathematical way of uh, representing that sum is shown right here. It's this thing right here, where this symbol that looks like a, a, a funny uh, E, that this symbol is a, is the uh, capital letter, Greek letter of sigma, and this is always used in mathematics to represent a sum. We represent the limits of the sum by these numbers we put above and below the sigma sign. We say n goes from 0 to infinity, and we say the sum, we're summing up the terms of the form x to the n divided by n factorial. So this summation notation exactly means this representation uh, right along here. Okay, That's what that summation representation means this thing right in here. This is x to the n over n factorial. Now, if we replace the value of x uh, by the term i theta, so x is now replaced. We say x equals i theta. Then we can write out this series expansion in this form. It's the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, i theta raised to the nth power, divided by n factorial. Or if I write that out term by term, it's 1 plus i theta divided by 1 plus i theta squared divided by 2 plus i theta cubed divided by 3 factorial plus and so on all the way out. So this is um, uh, a, a bit more information about, uh, about e to the i theta. Now if you recall I told you earlier that e to the i theta, let me just write it right here, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i, the complex constant, times sine theta. Now, how can we show that that's possibly true? Well, let me give it a try. Okay, so here we have this expression right here. Now, if you remember, and we talked about actually in our programming class, uh, the series expansion for sine theta, and we said that you can uh, sum up this series expansion. Sine theta is equal to theta minus theta cubed, uh, theta cubed divided by 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth <clears throat> divided by 5 factorial excuse me, <clears throat> minus theta to the seventh divided by seven factorial, okay, plus dot, dot, dot. So this is the series expansion for sine theta. We've talked about this already. Uh, now, it also turns out that the series expansion for cosine theta is given by this series. 
1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the 4th over 4 factorial minus theta to the 6 over 6 factorial and so on. Now notice two things about the series expansion. One is the series expansion for sine theta has all odd powers of theta. Okay, 3, 5, 7, okay, here's, here's 1, the first power. The series expansion for cosine theta has all even powers of theta. This would be theta to the 0, which is 1, theta squared, the 4th, the 6th, and so on. So let's see if I can use the fact that this is the series expansion for sine theta, this is the series expansion for cosine theta, to take the series expansion for e to the i theta, which is this thing right in here, and show how this can be uh, gives us uh, the result we're looking for. So in order to do that, to make the observation that what we have here is 1, okay, and, I'm, and this is i theta right here. Now, i squared theta squared, remember i squared is negative 1. So this becomes negative theta squared over 2 factorial plus, now i cubed, well i cubed, let's see, uh, i cubed is i times i times i, i times i times i. I know that i squared here is negative 1, so this is negative 1 times i, or it's equal to negative i. So i cubed is negative i, so this becomes negative i times theta cubed over 3 factorial. Okay, this term right here, this is i to the fourth. Now remember I said that you know that i squared is equal to negative 1, so we can compute i to the fourth. i to the fourth is, um, uh, let me just take this out here, that's i cubed. Uh, i to the fourth is equal to i times i times i times i. i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 1 times negative 1 again. So i to the fourth is just equal to 1. Okay, so i to the fourth is a plus 1, so this becomes theta to the fourth over 4 factorial. Let me take this term out of here. Okay, we have i to the fifth. Well, i to the fifth is equal to i to the fourth times i, and I've just finished showing that i to the fourth is equal to 1, so this becomes then i times theta to the fifth over 5 factorial i to the sixth um, becomes negative theta to the sixth over six factorial and then finally i to the seventh well let's let's write this down here i to the seventh figure that out again is i times i times i times i there's i to the fourth times i times i times i. Okay, so these two i's is, that multiplies to negative 1. These two i's multiply to negative 1. These two i's multiply by negative 1, multiply to negative 1, and this is i. So negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times i is equal to negative i. So this becomes negative i theta to the seventh divided by 7 factorial. So let's see how this, uh, this sum can now be uh, broken down. Let's accumulate all the even powers of theta together and all the odd powers of theta together. So we do all the even powers of theta and we have this equals okay, uh, even power 1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial 
Uh, here is a plus theta to the fourth over four factorial. Um, negative theta to the sixth. Let me fix that factorial. Negative theta to the sixth over six factorial. Okay, now let's accumulate all the odd powers of um, uh, of theta. We have plus i theta. And this and the next one is minus i theta cubed over three factorial. Here we have a plus i times theta to the fifth over five factorial. And then a minus i times theta to the seventh over seven factorial. And you'll notice this right here is exactly equal to the the, the, the terms in the series expansion for cosine. So here's where the cosine theta comes from. And this right here um, is, if we factor out an i, this is i times theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over five factorial minus theta to the seventh over seven factorial. So this term in brackets, theta minus theta cubed over three factorial plus theta to the fifth over five factorial minus theta to the seventh over seven factorial. This term right in here is sine theta. So here's what we have. So we have the this series expansion looks like cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Cosine theta plus i times sine theta which is exactly what I set out to show. Okay, until next time.